we keep seeing these spikes and they go right back down. That's because it's localized. It's only little bitty pieces of this stuff that's actually making it over here. And so that's why you're seeing uh, certain detectors showing higher levels, others showing no increases, others showing just a general increase. That's why this is happening. Now remember, we have heard over and over and over and over again that it was only low radiation in Japan, and it turns out that that was a cover-up. The Russians in 86 with Chernobyl, same story. Governments behave the same, deceptive, whitewashing, manipulative, because they'd rather not have liability for these big corporations that built these plants. They'd rather not have politicians that have been pro-nuclear uh, getting in political trouble. And so low levels of radiation found in U.S. milk are saying, don't worry about it, it's going to go down soon. Total lie. Uh, I would absolutely expect, I'd say it's 100%, because those, those trade winds and jet stream haven't changed, that it's going to go up in the next week to two weeks. That they're now dumping this radiation-filled water at 100,000 times safe levels directly in the Pacific. They uh, are saying this could go on for several months before they even figure out how to fix it. Uh, more radiation is drifting over at 181 times safe levels of radioactive iodine, 131. According to universities and state governments that have been doing the testing uh, at a state-slash-university facility in Berkeley, uh, other state facilities are picking up similar readings. Uh, that's a big deal that it's a footnote in the New York Times, and they're not even telling people don't drink milk on the West Coast. There's no doubt that many of the cows are bioaccumulating radioactive isotopes, and it's coming out in the milk. That was reported last Wednesday by the San Francisco Chronicle, the Oregonian, you name it. Several years ago, I rang the man in Melbourne who is in charge of um, assessing the food coming from Europe, whether it's radioactive or not. And I said, how do you decide which batches to test? Because the fallout came down in hot spots depending upon the rainfall. So it's very heterogeneous. It's not uniform in Europe. Um, I mean, there are over 600 farms in Cumbria and Wales growing lambs and the lambs are so full of cesium-137 they're so radioactive they can't be sold and the government's um, closed the farms down for a hundred years but it should be 600 years because that's how long the cesium lasts in the soil and concentrates in the grass and gets into the meat. So he said well we do random spot checks and I said what does that mean? He said well the computer picks out certain batches to test which of course means you're going to miss a lot of stuff. And I said, what do you do when you find radioactive food? He said, oh, we dilute it with non-radioactive food. The solution to pollution by dilution is fallacious when it comes to radiation, because when you eat radioactive food, it bioconcentrates back in your body. Um, so it's da I specifically look at where food comes from in the shops, and I don't buy anything that comes from Europe. And we have gorgeous food here, including homemade olive oil and the like. That's a worry, but we should be selling our beautiful, clean, non-radioactive food to a radioactive Europe. But we don't do that because we want to sell uranium to make more countries radioactive if there's a meltdown. Now, how did this occur that more than a quarter of a million people have already died from Chernobyl, yet the International Atomic Energy Agency, an arm of the United Nations, says only 56 people died? Well, it's because in 1958 or 9, the World Health Organization signed a contract with the IAEA to say that they would not study any accidents related to nuclear power if the IAEA said that they were not to. So the WHO has done no studies on what's happening in Chernobyl. Over 10,000 people have had their thyroids removed for thyroid cancer. That's an un heard of medical situation. I practiced medicine for many, many decades and I only ever saw one case of thyroid cancer. Um, I've seen none in children and a lot of the children are getting thyroid cancer and huge numbers are getting leukemia. There are homes full of the most grossly deformed children that my colleagues, pediatricians, have never seen before. This is a conspiracy beyond belief. It's wicked. And if the people of the world knew about this, then it would mean the end of nuclear power, which it should have meant anyway from the start.
Why don't the people of the world know? Well, because the IAEA struts around and says, you know, there have been virtually no deaths at Chernobyl, and people believe them, and the press is lazy. Um, many people working in the media now are young, they don't even remember Chernobyl. Um, and the bosses of the media, they don't necessarily want to print the truth. This is a huge story. Massive. It's like the way America covered up the data from Hiroshima and Nagasaki for the first five years. They didn't tell people, the world, that people were dying of acute radiation illness with their hair falling out, vomiting and bleeding to death. They didn't tell people that the children were getting leukaemia. It was a total cover-up for at least five years. So the nuclear industry is rife with lies. Um, and more than that, <laughs> It's endangering life on the planet because as we export uranium and it gets into nuclear power plants which make plutonium which is a fuel for nuclear weapons which lasts for half a million years we are causing the proliferation of nuclear weapons around the world well you know you may sell it to a country that signed the non-proliferation treaty and promises it won't build bombs from its plutonium but that might be one leader and one government, but you know how governments change within our lifetime. Dictators arise, dictators fall, all sorts of crazy things happen. And we're talking about plutonium that lives for half a million years. I don't understand how these people like Gareth Evans, Martin Ferguson, Kevin Rudd, John Howard can't get their, their flaming heads around <laughs> the very obvious, the very obvious. Why do they have such tunnel vision and little brains? And we're talking about nuclear war. And when we talk about nuclear war, we have to know that 97% of the world's nuclear weapons belong to America and Russia, and thousands of them are ready to go on hair trigger alert with a three minute decision time by Putin or Obama. And there are enough weapons now to to overkill every person seven times in the world. That means they die, they stand up, they die again. It's a Pentagon term, of course. Um, and as more countries get nuclear weapons, as they are so doing now, I mean, there are, I think, 70 nations that now want nuclear reactors, and that means they'll have access to weapons. You can find the design on the internet. I mean, it's easy to make a bomb. All you need is plutonium fuel or uranium fuel. As more countries get them, I mean, for instance, if Iran does get a nuclear weapon and it uses it on Israel, which has the third largest arsenal in the world, 200 to 400 bombs, there would be a massive annihilation of the Middle East. But that could trigger with the anxiety and America's attachment to Israel and Russia's unease about the whole Middle East situation, it could trigger a holocaust between Russia and America. So international anxiety induced by 9-11 or whatever when they went to the highest state of nuclear alert at 9-11 because no one knew what was happening from DEFCON 6 to DEFCON 2 just before they pressed the button. No one knows about that. That was on the website for a few days till they took it down. The Strategic Air Command website, STRATCOM. You know, those situations, we have false alerts and false starts to start nuclear war many days between, in, in Russia and America. I mean, we're just sitting on the edge of the, of the nuclear holocaust cliff. And as we export uranium, we are potentiating that risk, that danger, that anxiety. As, as Kennedy said, the nuclear sword of Damocles twists over our heads. Every man, woman, and child lives under a nuclear sword of Damocles, hanging by the slenderest of threads, capable of being cut at any moment by accident or miscalculation or by madness. The weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. You know, sometimes you're listening to NPR, National Petroleum Radio. <laughs> And, and you hear, Ooh. this is just a test of the emergency broadcasting system. 
This time they'd say, this is not a test, we're under nuclear attack, you've got 10 minutes to get to the nearest fallout shelter. Do you know where one is? No, because we've forgotten, we think the danger's gone away. You know the places marked with the S sign? There are safe places to go when you hear the alarm. If there is a warning, you will hear it before the bomb explodes. But sometimes, and this is very, very important, sometimes the bomb might explode without any warning. Then the first thing we would know about it would be the flash. And that means duck and cover fast, wherever you are. There's no time to look around or wait. Be like Bert. When there is a flash, duck and cover and do it fast. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Remember to keep your face and the back of your neck covered tightly. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. Then, if the glass breaks and flies through the air, it won't cut you. You duck, and then you cover. It's a bomb, duck and cover. We must be ready all the time for the atomic bomb. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. The bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. He is ready for it. Duck and cover. Add a boy, Tony. That flash means act fast. We've forgotten. We think the danger's gone away. Well, the bomb's going to come in here, and certainly there's at least one bomb targeted on Berkeley alone, let alone Oakland, let alone San Francisco, let alone Stanford. Comes in at 20 times the speed of sound, so you won't hear it. Explodes here, and it's a big Russian bomb, and you're targeted by big Russian bombs with the heat of the sun. And it digs a hole three quarters of a mile wide and 800 feet deep, turning us, the building, and the earth below to radioactive fallout shot up in that roiling mushroom cloud. Five miles from here in all directions, think of where you live, everyone will be vaporized. A little boy in Hiroshima was reaching up to catch a red dragonfly in his hand against the blue sky, and there was a blinding flash, and he literally vaporized and left his shadow behind him on the pavement, which is in the Hiroshima Museum. That was a little tiny bomb. 20 miles in all direction, everyone lethally burnt. Duck and cover. This family knows what to do, just as your own family should. They know that even a thin cloth helps protect them. Even a newspaper can save you from a bad burn. Burn patient, the most difficult we ever treat, takes a year to treat it. Severely burned patient, hundreds of units of blood and plasma, skin transplants, and then we often still lose them. Don't worry, though, the White House has been stockpiling large quantities of morphia just in case it's to be a nuclear war. We'll be dead or similarly injured, no hospitals, no syringes, nothing to do. Fifty miles out, if you look at the flash, you'll be instantly blinded with retinal burns. Winds of 500 miles an hour, and you've seen the pictures of nuclear weapons exploding and houses just being flattened, suck people out of buildings through windows that have been pop car, popcorn and shards of glass flying through the air at 100 miles an hour decapitate people. People flying through the air as missiles, and they hit the nearest solid object, and they're dead then the whole area will be engulfed in a firestorm of 3,000 square miles. So if you get in a fallout shelter, like in Dresden, the firestorm suck the oxygen out of the shelter and you'll be asphyxiated. Then the fires will coalesce throughout the United States and this whole country will be incinerated. There will be millions of corpses, animal and human alike. And as the radiation is so intense, the bacteria and viruses multiply and mutate to become more lethal and virulent. While if anyone survives, their immune mechanism is depleted by the radiation, and there will be epidemics if anyone survives of polio, typhoid, cholera, plague, you name it. People will have, left, have to live underground for the next six months. We've lost our chance. We're the first and last. After the blast, ships of plutonium.